had allowed him some time to get his affairs in order. Um, he had an unfortunate event which caused him to miss his court date. So they picked him up rather than come to you when he got picked up and ask you to consider a bond and getting out. I left, we left him in there on purpose to pay his penance. And we're asking you to follow the plea bargain if you would be, if you would. All right. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishments be assessed at two years in the prison. There's a $500 fine. And it says that both parties agree that if he didn't show up for sentencing, he would be subject to the full range of punishment. So state, are you still proceeding with the plea bargain agreement? Your Honor, uh, in light of him not showing up, uh, I believe the full range, uh, as it says in the agreement, um, at this point, uh, we'll defer to the court uh, for the reasoning behind that he didn't show up and it was a valid reason. Right. You want to say what? You want to call your client as a witness yes. to explain? Yes. Could you raise your right hand for me? Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. No. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. State your name for the record. All right. Why didn't you show up for court? We all have problems, but you're not telling me what your problems were. Well, first of all, my daughter had her had her baby, but I came up with uh, I was six soon, so. My corona. Everybody used coronavirus as a, an excuse, but did you provide any medical documentation that you had that? Yeah, I do. I have that. No, no, no. Did you provide any medical documentation to the court that you were ill? I, I think I did. I should have. Do you have any? I do not. Not for not for the date you're not for the date you're addressing, Judge. Yes. So you did not. Because if you would have, I would have that. And I don't have it. So you don't have any paperwork at all? I don't have anything to show that you you were ill. And that's the reason why you didn't show up for your sentencing. I do have that I was lenient with you to allow you to get your affairs in order. And to come back on a different date for sentencing. That's what I have. So why shouldn't I sentence you? To be on the two years because that's your agreement. Your agreement is if you don't show up for sentencing, you are subject to the full range of punishment. So my question to you is why shouldn't I sentence you to 20 years? Say that again, yes. Your agreement was that if you did not show up for your sentencing date, that your range of punishment would be up to 20 years in prison. You did not show up. So the question is, why shouldn't I send you to prison for 20 years? I most definitely didn't understand that one. No, you did, because it's a part of your plea bargain agreement. And what I can tell you, and I'm sure your counsel will tell you this, and even though this is a, a new prosecutor to this court, I go over the plea bargain agreement in great detail and ask on the record, do you understand that to be the plea bargain agreement? And usually, well, not usually, every time I ask the defendant first, do you understand that be the plea bargain agreement? And they will say yes. Then I will either ask the state of the defense attorney, is that the plea bargain agreement? And I can tell you that you are aware that you're, you were subject to the entire range of punishment. So we're back to this. Why shouldn't I sentence you to 20 years? Because that was your bargain, that if you didn't show up for court, that you will be subject to the full range of punishment. And I remember all of the people who say, give me some extra time and I will show up. What was my name? Yeah, I mean, she had a baby next month or whatever, you know what I mean? But I, I, I don't think What do you I, mean she has her baby next month? You told me she had, she already had the baby. No, no, no. She went to the hospital. But she was sick. I thought that she wasn't going to even and she's gonna lose the baby or whatever, you know what I mean? And when did this happen? Like last month. All right, so that does that happened last month, so that would have been January. So that still doesn't explain why you didn't show up for your sentencing uh, on November. You were set for sentencing on November third. Do here's the thing. Sometimes people don't have an excuse. Sometimes it's like I made a bad decision. 
I was enjoying my free life out here and I just didn't show up. So I'm trying to figure out, is that your case or is there something else that was going on in your life? Because you're looking at 20 years in prison. That he doesn't have, he doesn't have an excuse that we want to offer at this time. He's, he, he does. I, re, I mean, I agree with the court. You did admonish him. He, 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 he understood that. Um, I'm concerned. I mean, as we stand here today, he's not near as cognizant as I've dealt with as he's been in the past. Um, I'm somewhat concerned about that, but I, I mean, he doesn't. He's not a man of means. When that November date came, his phone was cut off. We were not able to locate him. I mean, he didn't. I, mean, I know I spoke to him after that when his daughter was sick. But that's. We'd ask you not to send us into twenty years. We don't think that's. Um, we hope that that's not what the court decides to do. But if the court decides, we ask the court to follow the plea bargain and perhaps give him three years. To, you know, I can indicate that the court takes this seriously and. All right, state. And lieu of the explanation of the judge, the state, with previous negotiations that we have in our file, we believe the appropriate sentence would be five years. All right, this is what the court is going to do. Uh, four years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. Take in consideration 2021 CR 2207. 2021 CR 1465, 2021 CR 2771. The court will give you credit for any time served. There's a $500 fine, time and money will run concurrent. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? That's your issue signature. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? We can go off the record. Mr. Carroll, I always, when attorneys say, can you give my client some extra time to report? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I take it very seriously when I give someone time to report. Because when you think about it, somebody's saying, all right, I'm going to show up and I'm going to take my prison sentence. You didn't show up. And that's a problem. And if there would have been a good explanation, uh, things may have turned out differently. I don't even remember the word. All right, so we're you can have him have a seat. There's there, supposed there's to impact. Impact. There's not. No, there's All right, no. thank you. Yeah, Joe, sorry, we're just going to go ahead and surpass that because. Good. All right, thank you. Are you the same Amethyst P. Garcia who's placed on community supervision in 2021 CR 2958 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, one gram or four grams on April 18, 2022, for a term of five years? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, state. I uh, guess, Your Honor. Vi uh, actually, Your Honor, on violation condition number one, uh, on the June 9th, 2022, the state would like to orderly amend it, uh, striking the language uh, W slash I D E L, which, which stands for with intent to deliver uh, to the court. Any objection? No objection, ma'am. All Thank right. You. Ms. Garcia, do you understand your attorney has uh, 10 days to prepare for a trial? Uh, did you understand that's a substantive change to the motion to revoke? Yes. Uh, knowing that, do you still wish to uh, continue? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, we've lost video. Okay. All right. Uh, state. Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number one on or about the ninth day of June 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Emesis P. Garcia, committed the offense of possession of controlled substance, penalty group one, 400 to 200 grams, in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. 
Yeah, or we'll waive the remaining violated conditions. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court can find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to six years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Uh, I'm assuming there is no agreement on the motion to revoke? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. And the state is silent on... 2022 CR 8569. Uh, and that cause number, uh, defense, do you have any witnesses? No, oh, yeah. All right. Then the court will hear argument. Well, on, on the, uh, or uh, are you saying for the application for probation? Yes. Yeah, the application for probation. Now, when we were um, trying to negotiate all of this uh, MPR and everything, so my understanding is, and of course, right now I'm saying it's different, but my understanding is that the MPR, uh, agreement for the for punishment would be the, to run concurrent or to run uh, together with the case that she she plead, she plead on so um that's what on that new case your honor we're asking this court to give her another opportunity now she did uh not comply with her probation in fact she as your honor can read she didn't even start her probation she, I mean, she didn't show up for orientation or anything like that, that which caused the uh, warrant and everything to come in. Now, she's realized she's been in jail since November. She realizes that she has, this has to stop. And she picked up a new case. It doesn't get any better because it gets worse as you go along. However, I'm asking this court to give her another opportunity. And, and why should you give her another opportunity? on probation is because I think that she realizes that this has to stop her. She had a death in the family of her grandmother last year. That was her mother figure. She uh, lost a brother. She also uh, contributed to her mental or mental state, which made her uh, do a uh, bad job. So, um, we're asking the court to give her the opportunity to uh, go on probation, do things right, go back to she's got five daughters to go on to, which are in the hands of their family. She has a father that is there that is willing to support her, and, and she also has a job that's waiting for her if, when she gets out. Yeah. So we're asking the court to give her the opportunity. It's the second opportunity. I know that the facts in her case don't warrant it, but we're asking the court to do so. Because I, I, I had long conversations with Ms. Garcia and I can tell the difference in attitude as to what she has to do in order to continue on with her life. Now, the uh, TAP evaluations are um, recommending uh, safety, uh, and safety right now is. I know it's a long waiting list and it'll be maybe a, a year, I mean, a few months before she goes to safety. Uh, but we're asking the court to uh, follow the, the uh, other alternative, which is the outpatient treatment and put as many uh, requirements on her for her probation for to do the outpatient treatment. That way she can go to work, she can go take care of her, her children and, and she can prove to this court that, that she, and I'm not saying she learned her lesson. I'm just saying she had uh, learned that she has to stop. That's the only word that can come up. With. She has to stop. She has to, she has to grow up and be there, a parent for her children. And I'm asking the court for probation. All right. Um, so anything you wish to say, Ms. Garcia? Used, All right, you want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. You can lower your hand. You're gonna to have to make sure you keep your voice up. State your name for the record. I'm a discourse. All right. What would you like to say? That I apologize that I was in the wrong. That I used an excuse when I it's not an excuse, and I've acknowledged that. No, I'm not saying that. Oh. 
now that's the time. No, I know that I have to do what I need to. And I do have five daughters, nine, eight, seven, six, and five. And I need to be there for them. I do have a job lined up. I do have support from family. And it's time to go on with my life and to carry on and do what I need to do as a woman, as a mother. And do what I need to do. All right. Uh, Ms. Garcia, I'm looking at your criminal history. And sometimes people are learning their lessons, you know, but your criminal history is not good. And when I look at criminal history, I'm not necessarily looking at it to say, oh, this person is a bad person. I'm looking at it to see, has there been any type of intervention? Has somebody learned their lesson? Is there anything that I can do to protect the community and have this person being, you know, um, productive member of society. And I'm looking at your history and there have been plenty of interventions for you and you have not taken advantage of any of those interventions. And there's, I don't think there's, I don't think probation is appropriate for you because of that. And because of um, other things that are in the PSI report, the fact that I previously had you on probation to work with you, and I think any defense attorney in this courthouse, in this courtroom will tell you that when I put people on probation, I'm hoping that they will be successful and I give them conditions to um, have tools to be successful. And I always ask people when I place them on probation, I always ask them, is there anything else they need from the court to be successful? And what you've done since you've been on probation is not report. You just picked up new charges, and I can't have that. All right, uh, the court is going to sentence you to a fifteen hundred dollar fine, time and money. I'm sorry, cause number two thousand twenty two CR eight five six nine. The court will sentence you to a fifteen hundred dollar fine, time and money, and run concurrent. This will run concurrent with two thousand twenty one CR two nine five eight. Five years in the prison. Take in consideration night mag number six eight eight seven zero two give you credit for any time served. It's gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a felony conviction, uh, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Now, if you would like, because I do see the TAP evaluation, they're recommending that you do inpatient treatment. If you would like, I could recommend you for the therapeutic community. Uh, it is a drug treatment program. I cannot force them to put you into it. All I can do is recommend it. And then you will have to recommend it yourself. It does not include, increase the amount of time that you're in custody, would you like to be considered? No. Of course, we're being in custody. Don't do it again. Would you explain again, Your Honor? All right. So, All right. the therapeutic community, I do not have jurisdiction to force them to place you in the therapeutic community. The therapeutic community is a program at the prison that will hopefully help you with any drug issues you have. If you are accepted into the therapeutic community, it does not increase your prison time. So for example, in this case, you've been sentenced to five years prison. If you're in the therapeutic community and you do not complete it, they're not gonna say, oh, she didn't complete it in five years. So we're giving her six years. If you're up for parole and they deem your parole worthy at two years, they're not gonna say, ah, oh, we're giving her parole. We would give her parole, but because she hasn't completed the therapeutic community, we're not giving her parole. So it's merely a program to help you, hopefully, with any drug issues you have. All right, and we'll do a, a, a request for therapeutic community. All right, we can go off the record. Ms. Garcia, I know you wanted uh, probation. Uh, your attorney told me about your daughters. When you get out of prison, you need to make sure that you stay on the straight and narrow so you can be in their lives, all right? All right, good luck to you. Do you understand you're charged with burglary of a habitation force? 
That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? No. Then to the offense in count one, paragraph A, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? All right, off the record for a moment. Um, Deputy Laura, is he able to move to the other end? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're back on the record. State, do you have any evidence to support the plea? At this time, state introduces state's exhibit one and all of its attachments. No objections. Mr. Ferris, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that uh, document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? All right. After reviewing mm -hmm. state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are we proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, Judge, just that um, Mr. Ferris is very motivated to do well in this probation. And um, he asked that the court follows our agreement. The only other thing that I would ask, Judge, is if you would probate the fine, he is indigent. All right. So, uh, Mr. Ferris, if you're released, where would you be living? Do you have a place to stay? Yes, I do. All right. So, who are you? Who would you be living with? My wife. I'm sorry? My wife. All right. Are there any issues? Um, not. Uh, in our communications today, no, ma'am. All right. Does your wife want you living with her? Of course. She had to be. Well, I mean, just because a female may have someone's child, that doesn't necessarily mean that they want them living with them. I don't need to help her. Well, I mean, again, I people can help with children without living with someone. So here's the thing. If you end up seeing your wife and she doesn't want you staying with her, then you can't stay with her. All right. And are you all legally married? Did you go to the courthouse and or it, did you have a ceremony? Went to courthouse. Okay. Paid, uh, 150 bucks for it. All right. How many children do you have? Two. She just had them. Ages? One and just just had the other one. Two boys. Okay. What are the dates of birth? What are the dates of birth? Mm-hmm. She had one. Around probably uh, December. The other one she was in, uh, But no, 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 no. You're giving me a month, but what is the child's date of birth? If the oh, child, of birth. Oh, yeah, if the child is expecting a birthday gift from you and they want it on their birthday, when would they get it? See that February? You know? February 3rd? Huh? Yeah, somebody's on the 3rd. All right, so you're saying February 3rd. So much part. So that's one. So what's the date of birth of the other child? You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do better. You understand? I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. All right. That's a tattoo you can get on your arm instead of what you have. I was gonna get two two tattoos. With their dates of birth. Yes, my word. All right. And what is that other tattoo about? I don't even know. They didn't give it to me. Who is they? Some friend of mine. I, I don't know. I don't know. Who it is. It's probably my, my, I don't know. I mean, when did you receive that tattoo? Long time ago. Okay. So why were you in uh, this apartment? I was hoping that my friend move, I'm doing a good deed. I just moved out of his couch and that was it. And she said, uh, I took something. I didn't take nothing. All I did was help us move the couch. And that was it, man. All right. Do you want a jury trial? I was trying to help the guy out move and I was going to. No, no, no. Here's my question. Do you want a jury trial or you want to go forward with this plea agreement? I just want to get out. No, I mean, do you want to have a jury trial or do you want to go forward with this plea? Because if you want a jury trial, then we will give you a jury trial quick, fast, and a hurry. It won't be today. I know that. But with so, this plea, I'll get quick and hurry out. I'm sorry, what? That plea, I'll get quick and hurry out. Here's the thing when people think about doing plea agreements and their goal is, I want to get out. There are consequences to all of these cases for entering into pleas. So with this one, it's a criminal conviction and you're not going to be able allowed to have any weapons or ammunition because it's a criminal conviction. One weapon I have Sometimes to these pleas affect your ability or impact your ability to obtain an education and receive um, financial aid. 
Sometimes it impacts your ability to have certain forms of employment that requires licensing. It affects and impacts your ability ability to register to vote because you're a convicted felon. You won't be able to register to vote until you are no longer on paper. So if you want to go forward with the plea, the court will place you on probation. If you wish to have a jury trial, then the court will set this for a jury trial. So do you wish to go forward with this plea? I want to plea. I want to get out. I mean, that, that's a, I, I mean, just would be a nutshell for now. I posed with my friend. I, I wasn't, I didn't get into the house. Well, let me just tell you what I, I read. In the, let me just tell you what I read in the police report. It mentions your good deed, but if you're doing a good deed, you don't know, accept payment for it. So this is what's in the police report. It says, victim one and victim two were in the process of moving out of their apartment. Victim two asks you, which is described as AP, which stands for arrested person, to help with the move, and he would pay him some money. Arrested person stole victim two's bicycle and left the location. While victim one and victim two were out dropping off belongings, the arrested person returned and entered the apartment without victim one and victim two's consent. Arrested person took victim's property out of the apartment and left the location. Arrested person returned for more property and was caught by victim two. Victim two detained arrested person until police arrived. So I will place you on probation. It's completely up to you. But if you want to go to a jury trial, we will give you a jury trial as well. So this is going to be my last time asking you, do you want me to go forward with placing you on probation? That's a yes, yes or no. Probation. All right. Then this is what the court will do. The court will sentence you to 10 years in prison, suspended and probated for 10 years. There's a thousand dollar fine that'll be probated. Take into consideration 2022 CR 8418. There's to be $500 restitution and no contact. All right, we can go off the record. Uh, Mr. Ferris, you need to learn the, the birth dates of your children. You only have two. Some people come here, they have 10. And you need to be a better father to them because they're expecting you to be in their life. All right. Okay, good luck to you.